I spent 100 days in a brutal apocalypse. Zombie mutants have taken over the city and I have to survive long enough until help arrives. My goal is to kill the defiled zombie, the ender dragon, and the Hershegeist. Will I survive or will I fall defenseless against these mutated creatures? This is 100 days, zombie wasteland. Okay, I spawned in a huge desert, but I had no time to waste. I started off by running to the nearest tree and breaking it down. Breaking logs in this mod took really long, but it allowed me to get the whole tree down with one block. I gathered enough stone for a full set of tools and then chopped some wood for later. A few zombies already somehow found me, so I killed all of them and got out of that area quickly. While running, I quickly realized that I needed some sort of food, so I found these ghosts that actually dropped mutton and leather when killed. I decided to kill about 10 of these ghosts just so I had a good food supply, and while exploring, I found a desert temple. Upon closer look, it actually had a surface dungeon connected to it. I dug up the first chest, which didn't really have anything, but when I found the second chest, there was actually an ancient tome enchanted with sharpness 5. Tomes can be combined with enchanted books to give you level 6 enchantments. Anyways, I dug my way into the temple. The first chest had two diamonds and other useful things. The second chest had iron and an infinity book. Chest number 3 had a ton of gold and a cursed book, and chest number 4 had a golden apple. Pretty good haul. I heard a ton of zombies surrounding me, and I realized that they were somehow under the temple, so I dug down and revealed some odd structure. I didn't really want to deal with it yet so as i was trying to make my way back up i got ambushed by zombies and i was taken down to three hearts after regenerating some of my health i made a run for it right as it started getting dark i found a village which saved my life and right as i got there it started storming really bad i used my string to make wool which crafted into a bed and slept Day 2. Straight off the bat, I made an iron chest plate so I could take more hits from the zombies. I also made a pickaxe and a helmet with my remaining resources. Then, I filled a chest, cooked some food, and went exploring. While I was exploring, I found this weird yellow ore and decided to mine it. Sulfur. I don't know what it does, but I'll keep it for later. I found another underground zombie plant and decided to explore it this time. Except this time, I tried being really careful. It felt like I was fighting zombies forever, until I realized they probably have spawners infinitely respawning them. So I built above one of the rooms and broke the spawner. Suddenly, I got hit off my platform. I luckily escaped and actually found a cave behind the wall, which was pretty cool. Once I killed all the zombies, I looted a chest which had a notch apple in it. The second chest then gave me a diamond helmet and an iron sword. Then, I went back into the cave to mine coal and enough iron for an anvil. After resurfacing, I killed a few more goats and made it back to the village. I smelted the iron that I mined from the cave, and with that, I made leggings and boots and then made an axe. After gathering more food and blocks, it was time to re-explore the structure under the temple. I broke the first spawner, bridged over top the zombies, and broke spawner number two on the opposite side. The the first chest that I looted had a diamond and an efficiency 5 tome. The second chest had a power 5 book and a golden apple, which was definitely going to be useful. Chest number 3 had two golden apples and some gunpowder. Chest number 4 had a golden apple and a diamond. And I couldn't get to the chests in this room since it was entirely filled by zombies. So I did a big brain play and dug into the walls to get to the chests, but unfortunately they didn't really have anything good anyways. It was okay though, because the last chest that I found gave me diamond leggings and other useful things. After completely looting the structure, I tried making my way back up, but I instantly heard a swarm of coyotes just waiting to kill me. So I slept in a wall and then made my way back up since the dogs should no longer be aggro in the daytime. I had another problem though. I never broke the spider spawner in the temple above the structure, so when I tried making it back up, I instantly got swarmed by a ton of these spiders trying to kill me. I killed all of them, and since they won't spawn in the daytime, it was finally safe for me to make my escape. I came back to the village to deposit all my resources, and then I kind of got distracted by some crabs that I found on the beach. I accidentally got a little bit too close and the crab attacked me, but I don't take disrespect from anyone or anything. So I killed the crab and ate them for lunch. Day 5. After that ordeal, I wanted to use the map that I found to locate the hidden treasure. After traveling for literally such a long time, I finally started to make progress. I'm pretty sure the game was trying to mess with me because I spent a whole day trying to find this treasure and I swear I was right in the middle of the X. When I finally dug up the chest, the loot was so garbage. So out of sadness, I ran back home disappointed. When I got back to the village, I decided that I didn't want to live there anymore and I was going to start building my own base. I started exploring the area to find the best place to live and I found a pretty good spot to start building. Before Beforehand, I chopped down a lot of trees to have enough wood to build with, and I also cleared out a big portion of the area so I would have a flat surface to build on. I wanted to use cobblestone as my base because then it couldn't burn or be broken by zombies, so I spent some time mining a few stacks underground. I finally started building, and I built my base several blocks high for obvious reasons. This would make it hard for the zombies, coyotes, and tarantulas to get to my base, but it would not stop sheep. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> I found some sheep around me, so I decided to fence them in for a farm. Then after that, I chopped more trees down because I was running out of my supply 
apply pretty quickly. The actual building of the base took me several days, and since I'm not a very good builder, uh, spoiler warning, you're probably gonna laugh at how it looks. While I'm building the foundation though, I just want to say thank you guys so much for 100k, and if you haven't subscribed yet, then what are you doing? Subscribe now, and if this 100 days video does really well, then I'll keep doing these for you guys. Anyways, I finished the foundation of my house, and all I needed now was some glass panes to fill in my windows. While I was wandering around, I decided to kill a sheep, and for some reason, a group of sheep started walking towards me. I didn't realize until they were a few blocks away that they were actually trying to kill me. I tried to escape by going up my ladder, but just when I thought I was safe, one of the sheep started climbing up to me, so I blocked it off. I ended up separating the sheep with water, and I killed each of them off one by one. I guess this was a pretty good way to get food. I started off shoveling a bunch of nearby sand so I could smelt it and make windows, but then, as I started cooking the sand, I got a notification that a blood moon was rising. I had no idea what that even meant, but you're about to see soon why this is a very bad thing. As you can see, zombies and tarantulas were spawning at a very rapid rate, leaving me stranded up in my base. To make matters worse, your character is locked with insomnia, denying you from even being able to sleep the night away. If I were to accidentally fall off my base, or even let anything up the ladder, I would probably be dead in seconds. The only thing I could do was wait out the blood moon and deal with it in the morning. It was finally morning, but the army of mobs was still waiting for me to come out of hiding. After waiting for too long, I decided to just risk it and jump down. I started running, but the tarantulas were really fast, so I decided to man up and kill each one of them. The phantom zombies were also a little faster than normal, so they all grouped up to kill me, and I picked them off one by one. Finally, the slower zombies were the last ones left. I broke all my tools in the process of trying to get rid of these guys, but I finally cleared them out. That was annoying. I spent the rest of days 11 through 15 making renovations to my house and gathering more resources. I filled in the glass panes on my house and added more wooden support beams. For the rest of my build, I just used cobblestone. It wasn't the prettiest block, but it helped keep my base away from these creatures. I was still burning through resources though, so I gathered as much wood as possible and continued to work on my base, when suddenly another blood moon was rising. Are you kidding me? This time, I came up with an idea off the spot. I towered up away from my base, placed lava below me, and let it flow onto the monsters below. This was actually working amazingly well. Every single mob that spawned and came for me just got burned alive, which left much less of a mess for me. Every time a mob was locked onto me, it started pushing the other monster in front of it into the lava which kept burning them. This cycle went on for a while. I waited out the blood mood once more, and when it was finally over, I dropped down, killed the rest of the zombies, and gathered all the loot. I got a ton of string and rotten flesh. If I wanted to actually stand a chance against these monsters, I was gonna have to upgrade my gear. To get better gear, I first needed the resources, so I explored the first cave near my house and went mining. I mined everything that I passed, coal, iron, sulfur, tin, etc. I ended up exploring over like 20 different caves, clearing them of every single resource they had. I also ended up getting lapis for my enchantments. Spiders in this mod are super aggressive, so when I found a spawner nearby, they instantly spawned in and started attacking me. They also throw webs at you and attack in large groups, which was super annoying to clear out. After finally clearing the spiders, I checked the dungeon chest for anything good and then mined the nearby diamonds. Then, not even 10 seconds later, I ran into a lava pool which had even more diamonds. This ended up being really lucky too, because it was an 8 vein which was definitely going to help me upgrade my gear. After mining a lot more iron and lapis, I finally found my third vein of diamonds which ended up being a five vein. I'm not complaining. Then I spent some time mining some obsidian to use for enchantments and another portal and after exploring for another half hour and finding another vein of diamonds it was finally time to head back home. I needed bookshelves if I wanted to get level 30 enchants so to craft these books I planted a ton of sugarcane near my house to harvest for paper later on. While they were growing I decided to explore the area even more and I came across a few horses. I really wanted to tame one so I grabbed apples from the nearby trees and made him my friend. I then made a quick stop by my house to grab a saddle and horse armor and when I came back, he was now going to be my best friend. I spent some time making my horse a little pen because I wanted him to be comfortable and have a safe place to stay. When I came back to my sugarcane later on, it was all fully grown. I gathered every bit of it and crafted it all into paper. Then I killed a lot of goats to get enough leather to make books, which I could later craft into bookshelves. I also had previous books that I gathered from the village's bookshelves, so I built this enchantment area pretty quick. I then used my leftover obsidian to make a nether portal. After entering the nether, I actually got one of the luckiest spawns I could have gotten. My nether portal was right in the middle of a fortress. I ignored most of the structure and decided to just mine quartz so I could get level 30 and enchant my diamond gear. A bunch of zombies started ambushing me so I decided to just kill them all and finished mining enough quartz to hit level 30. After finally making it back to my house, I wanted to use the level 30 enchant on my sword, but for some reason it wanted to give me smite 4. 
gross. So then I tried my chest plate out, but I got unbreaking three and I didn't really want to take that chance. So I ended up enchanting my helmet because that was the only protection for enchant that was offered. I then decided to just take the sharpness three enchant on my sword for only 24 levels. And I actually got pretty lucky because it gave me fire aspect along with it. I then tested the sword on a zombie and it felt the exact same as before. Are you kidding me? It was going to be much easier for me to kill zombies and other creatures if I had a bow. So I decided that I wanted to make myself an overpowered bow that I could carry at all times. I made one for my current resources in my chest and checked which enchantment I was going to get. The enchantment table was offering an infinity enchantment for 30 levels, so I decided that I was going to take that and use my power 5 book from earlier to make a powerful bow. I didn't have enough levels yet though, so I was going to have to grind some levels before enchanting this bow and combining it in an anvil. I went into the nether and did nothing but mine quartz. If you don't know this already, quartz is one of the best ores to mine for levels because you can find it all over the nether and it gives a lot more XP. I did this for a very long time, and since I had a diamond pickaxe, it made it much easier. After being attacked by a funny looking skeleton and almost dying to a zombie in the nether i mined about 33 xp from quartz so i could enchant i mined up to 33 because if i wanted to enchant level 30 twice i now had the option to do that i headed back into the overworld and went back up to my base and when i enchanted the bow i got really lucky because it gave me a power four in addition to my infinity enchantment this was now going to be my main weapon against zombies and the only thing it was really missing was unbreaking three but i was not too worried about that while i was exploring the map i came across an odd looking structure in the plains i decided that i would explore explore it and when I ran up to it I heard a ton of zombies. I opened the door and a huge crowd of at least 20 zombies were there ready to attack me. I was ready though and with the help of my new gear I was able to take out the zombies pretty quickly. There was a lot though and there were actually some parts where I got pretty low from their attacks and I had to back off for a little while. This was just the first room and I was actually kind of scared as to what was to come in the second room. I made sure to keep my distance and attack these zombies safely but then I got kind of impatient and I just ran into the room to finish them off. After finally clearing out the last zombie I regenerated my health and advanced into the next room. This was the defiled zombie room, the first boss fight of the video. In this room, I saw a bunch of creatures that were locked up. There were zombie rippers, crawlers, hazmat zombies, and a molded zombie. I decided to go for the zombies in the hazmat suits because they looked the least dangerous to me, and I figured I could take all three of them in a fight. They actually managed to gang up on me, but I didn't worry too much because they didn't do too much damage, and I also had golden apples. After killing them relatively quickly, I went for the molded zombie next. This zombie does the most damage out of any zombie and also has 10 times the health of a regular regular zombie. I really didn't want this thing to hit me because if it did, I could be killed really, really quickly and this video would already be over. This thing was a tank and it took me a very long time to kill it. I finally took it out after bow spamming it for a very long time and when I finished it off, I decided to take the crawlers out next. Again, these are not any regular creatures. These mobs team up on you and try and take you out much faster than other hostile mobs. Luckily, I had full diamond armor and I was able to tank out most of the hits that they threw at me. They still did a lot of damage though, so I had to pillar up many different times to regenerate my health. This strategy actually works super well because whenever I towered up with blocks they couldn't crawl or reach anywhere near me. After killing the first two crawlers the last one was fairly easy to keep away since I only had one enemy to worry about. I put an end to it and readied myself for the next fight. Next up were the zombie rippers. I kept this one for last because I assumed they were going to be the most annoying to fight. I fought one of these before and since I had no armor they killed me in two hits. I kept a strategy of keeping them in their cell so they couldn't hit me and then once I took one of them out I let them free. These things actually had a lot of health for their size but once I took out the first two it wasn't too hard for me to to kill the last one. Last up was the defiled zombie. I was dreading this fight from the start. This mob can actually kill me in one hit, so it was a good thing I made a bow because I utilized this for almost the entire fight. This thing took way too many hits from a power four, but when I got it low enough, I decided to take my chance and kill it with my sharpness three sword. I took a look inside the chest from its cell and I actually got pretty amazing loot. There was a ton of enchanted books, potions, and god apples. This was definitely worth my time. After exiting the structure, I killed a few more zombies that were attracted to the noise, made it back to my base, and it's decided to use some of the loot I got. I crafted an anvil and then combined the flame book onto my power four bow to now light the zombies on fire. Then I combined the sharpness five book onto my sword which now made my sword sharp five fire aspect one. I had a bunch of zombies come to my base again and this time I wanted to take this chance to test my strength. I drank a strength potion and with my new sword I was finally able to one hit zombies. This was a huge step up from before and now surviving these 100 days was going to be a breeze. I collected all the xp from the crowd of dead zombies and went to sleep. Now that I had proper gear, it was time for me to explore. I got on my horse, pointed myself in a direction, and went onwards. I found a village pretty quickly, but the blacksmith didn't really have anything of use, and all the villagers were either clerics or farmers. Not what I was looking for. What I am looking for, however, is a cartographer. These villagers trade emeralds for special maps called woodland mansion maps. Woodland mansions are structures located thousands of blocks away that can contain overpowered loot. I decided to take the iron pickaxe from the blacksmith since I forgot mine at my base, and then I hopped back on my horse and left the village in search for a 
desert village with a cartographer. While in that same desert, I ran into a temple. And when I got off my horse, he just disappeared. I could still hear him making noises though, so I knew he was still there. I just had to relog my game to finally see him again. That was scary. When I looted the temple, there wasn't really anything of value except for a golden apple, so I didn't even bother to take the TNT underneath and I started getting on the move again. At this point, I was going thousands of blocks away from my base, which was okay because I made sure to mark my base cords down before I left. When I finally got out of the desert area, I found another village and started my search for a cartographer. It was looking pretty grim and every single villager I went up to had terrible trades. Right when I was about to leave, I actually found one hiding in a little house. I traded with him until he finally leveled up to give me the Woodland Mansion map. But the trade he was offering for it was much higher than I already brought with me. So I had to spend some time trading with other villagers to get the needed emeralds and I finally acquired a woodland mansion map. I now had a savannah pathfinder map, a desert map, flower forest map, ice plains map, woodland mansion map, and a buried treasure map. That's a lot of maps. I had no idea what these pathfinder maps did and for some reason I tried digging for them because I thought there would be treasure. After digging way too long I took the time to search up what they did and it turns out that they literally do nothing. Then why is there an X on there? Anyways apparently they're just supposed to help you find the bind which totally wasted my time but it's whatever though i followed the regular buried treasure map and dug up the chest which didn't really have much in it anyways now it was time for me to start my journey to the woodland mansion while i was traveling across the ocean i came across a pirate ship and these guys were angry they started shooting me with arrows way before i even got near them and these guys had really good aim i also got attacked by a shark in the middle of the fight and even an electric eel tried killing me after getting pelted by a ton of arrows i decided to just drive my boat straight into the ship i also saw this weird sea creature and killed it just to be safe when I raided the ship, the pirate skeletons started to attack me, but since I had sharpness 5, I killed them pretty quickly. I put on their pirate hat, but it kind of looked weird on me, so I just put my regular helmet back on, and then I went over to the lower deck. None of their chests really had much, but it was still a cool area to explore. I then used one of their beds and went to go attack the main pirate at the top of the ship. When I opened the trap door though, all the previous arrows that he shot just fell on top of me, and when I came back up, I finally killed him. I jumped all the way down back to where my boat was and continued my journey to the woodland mansion. I saw some sharks and jellyfish on the Way, which was pretty cool but when i passed this ocean monument the guardians were just being so annoying if you've ever explored a woodland mansion before you know just how long it takes to actually get there in this case it took me two days but usually it can take people around four to five days just to find the mansion this mansion was over eight thousand blocks away from me so the journey to this place was excruciating enough this better be worth it when i finally made it to the mansion i decided to enter through the front i'm pretty sure there was a bug with the mod though because the difficulty made it to where the evokers were spawning vexes at a much faster rate than usual this made it extremely glitchy and hard to get through but I decided to just deal with it. I found a chest in a jail cell and it contained god apples and cool new arrows. These arrows were called ender arrows and explosive arrows. Ender arrows teleport you wherever you shoot them and explosive arrows blow up anything you shoot. I then spent the next 10 minutes just fighting vexes and killing more pillagers until I finally stumbled across another chest. This one contained a totem of undying and more of those weird arrows. The vexes started doing a lot of damage so I put a totem of undying in my offhand just in case but it got so bad to the point of where I had to eat one of my god apples. I found another chest on the third floor which contained a ton of ender pearls and also an ender chest which was super useful. After that I found the next chest which had a feather falling four book which I can put on my boots and then lastly I just kept fighting these annoying vexes and I came across a room with shulker boxes. I collected all of these because these are going to be really useful for later and when I was about to leave I found a room full of gold blocks that I mined for golden apples. Finally I made my way back to my base. The base that I built just wasn't enough for me and I decided that if I wanted to build a new one then I would have to completely switch locations. I didn't have enough space in this one and a ton of monsters were still able to get through and attack me also it was really ugly i wasn't gonna move far though because about 100 blocks away from my base there was this really nice area that i had an amazing idea for this time i spent a ton of time working on the base i really didn't want to disappoint you guys after the first monstrosity you had to see so i promise this one is gonna be a lot better to build what i wanted though i needed a lot of quartz and i mean a lot i already had a lot from the mining i did in the nether earlier but this wasn't even 10 percent of the total quartz i would need so before we start the build i'm gonna have to make a quick trip to the nether. I grabbed a few shulker boxes from my base and then enchanted another diamond pickaxe so I could go mining for a long time. I got silk touch on this pickaxe which you would think is pretty lucky but actually if I wanted to mine quartz then this would actually make it a lot harder for me to gather it. While editing this video I realized I probably should have tried to enchant another pickaxe with fortune 3 because that would have made this a lot easier but that doesn't matter anymore. Anyways I decided to stick with my original efficiency 4 pickaxe and I made my way into the nether. Like I said earlier I had to mine a lot of quartz so I spent a super long time in the 
the nether and just grinded out a ton of this stuff. There was a lot of annoying mobs to deal with while I was trying to mine and I had to fight them off before I could continue. But other than that, I got this task done pretty quickly. If you want a pro tip for mining quartz, make sure to mine the ones you can actually get to first. Don't bridge over a 100 block lava pool just to get one vein of it like me. Finally, after I finished mining all the quartz I needed for the base, I ended up with a full inventory and shulker box worth of quartz. It was now time to head back to the base and start building. When I got back into the overworld, it was actually a blood moon which was going to be kind of annoying but it wasn't too big of a deal. I made my way back into my base safe from all the zombies and tarantulas and then I spent some time crafting all the quartz into some blocks through my inventory. While I was doing this, some rude zombies decided that they wanted to climb up my ladder and intrude on me. Just plain disrespectful. I ended up breaking the ladder to my base and blocking it off for now so I could organize everything I needed to. Since there were so many zombies below me from the blood moon, I ended up using one of my ender arrows to launch an arrow out of one of my windows to make my escape. It didn't matter too much though because I still ended up having to kill the monsters or else they would just follow me all the way over to my new base location. These creatures are relentless. I finished off all the tarantulas and then I used my bow to kill most of the zombies and after I finished the last zombie I could finally go start my base. Look at how beautiful this area looks. To start my building I needed to get some sort of elevation on this thing so I decided to do something really risky and teleport right onto the side of it. Don't worry though if my plan failed I still had a totem in my offhand that would have saved me if I died. I started the platform of the base in the middle of the mountain and made it kind of big so that I would have enough space to build around it and also make it look really cool. For this build I was going to go for aesthetics over functionality which means that I spent most of my time trying to make this base look good. This was going to take a while. While I'm building this base I just wanted to remind you that I'm really trying to hit 5,000 likes on this video so if you haven't done that yet now would be a perfect time. After finishing the floor I moved on to the main walls and ceiling of the base. I want to show you guys the building aspect before revealing all of it because I put a ton of time and effort into this one. I had to make another trip back to the nether and get a lot more quartz but I'm not going to make you guys sit through that so after finishing most of my base I worked on the stairs leading up to it. This base kind of had a modern theme to it and it kind of suited more of a mansion than a zombie survival base but who really cares right? I smelted a ton of sand and used white stained glass for the window areas of the base because I felt like that really matched the quartz the best. And then finally I headed back to my old base to sleep. Now that the main part of the base was finished it was time for me to move all my stuff from my old base into my new one. I used a bunch of shulker boxes and my ender chest to neatly fit all of my items into and I also used my silk touch pickaxe to grab all the bookshelves from my enchantment area since using a regular axe would just drop books. I then officially moved over to my new base which was so nicely placed under the mountain and I spent the rest of this time organizing everything and making myself at home. It was now time for me to start my journey over to the end. I wanted to get the elytra so I could start flying everywhere and fighting zombies with end city loot. From my base I grabbed my blaze rods and ender pearls and also a few shulker boxes just in case. I crafted the blaze rods into powder and then made eight eyes of ender for the time being. I threw the first eye from the stairs of my base and then started making my way over towards the stronghold. I wanted to take my horse with me so I stopped by his pen to pick him up and ride over to the stronghold with him. I threw my second eye a few minutes after and as expected it was still in the same direction. I went around this small mountain and before I got to the water I decided that I was gonna throw another eye. Somehow the eye actually went backwards which meant that I already passed the stronghold. I went backwards about a hundred blocks and when I threw another eye it pointed me towards the mountain as expected. I put my horse into a two by two hole and then continued the rest of my journey on foot. Once I got to the other side of the mountain I threw another eye which led me towards the beach. I was getting really close now and finally after throwing my last eye it finally went underground. This meant I was right above the stronghold. Of course I broke rule number one in Minecraft and dug straight down but since I had good armor and a water bucket it didn't really matter. I kept digging and revealed the stronghold structure. I literally found the portal room immediately after entering and a bunch of silverfish started ganging up on me. I realized that using a sword to kill silverfish wasn't really a good idea because it hits all of the other silverfish around it causing more to spawn from the blocks around. So I used an axe to kill the rest of the silverfish and without any more hesitation I placed all eyes of ender into the portal and dove head first into the end. I luckily spawned inside of the ground so I really didn't have to worry about being hit off into the void so after I broke myself out I immediately started the fight. The ambience in the end sounded really creepy and there was no enderman on this world whatsoever so that actually made it like 10 times creepier for me. I'm gonna let you guys listen to the ambience just for a little bit so you could see how creeped out I was. Yeah, that sounds really scary. Anyways, I used my bow to clear out as many crystals as I could, and since I was a really good shot, I managed to get them all out pretty quickly. Then, I enderpearled onto the ones with cages, bridged away from them, and then shot them. I then water bucket clutched off the side and enderpearled onto the next crystal. Once again, I bridged away from it, shot it, but then I missed my MLG. A ton of zombies were following me this entire time, but since they were so slow, I was just able to run away from all of them. I realized that I accidentally left one crystal, and while I was trying to shoot it, the dragon hit me, and I hit this pretty clean MLG. 
After I finally got the crystal out, it was time to target the dragon. Since I had a powerful bow, every time I hit the dragon, it took away a ton of health from it. So I kind of abused my power and pelted it with powerful arrows. I was getting really low from the zombies around me, and it also wasn't helping that I kept getting hit from all of the dragon's breath. The dragon got really close to me, but I was able to change its path just by shooting it with a ton of arrows. And once the dragon perched down to the bedrock structure, I went underneath and hit it a bunch of times with my sword. After delivering the final blow with my powerful bow, I finally won the ender dragon fight. I went over and collected all of the XP, and instead of going back to the overworld, I decided that I was just going to go straight to the far lands portal. I wanted to get an elytra and other overpowered gear for myself before heading back home. I just want you guys to listen to the ambience one more time because I can't tell you how on edge I was while trying to get through this. Anyways, I tossed an enderpearl into the portal and made it to the end islands. Immediately after entering, I already found an end city, but this one looked pretty small and didn't even have a ship. I decided to explore it anyways, and after getting rid of the shulkers on the out and insides, I made my way up to the room with the loot. The shulkers were being really annoying, but since they didn't really do too much damage, I could deal with the levitation. I opened the first chest, and I actually got some pretty okay armor with a mending pickaxe. The second chest gave me protection 3 diamond leggings as well, which was a huge upgrade from what I had before. I took my chances and water bucketed off the side of the structure and continued my journey on finding an elytra. While exploring for another day, I finally found another end city and this one had a ship. This one was looking promising, so I entered through the bottom once again and made my way straight up. I didn't even find any loot though, and I guess that these types of buildings didn't even offer any chests for you, but it didn't really matter too much to me because I already had more than enough armor and tools, and all I was really looking for was an elytra anyway. After literally getting pelted by every single shulker possible, I used the levitation to my advantage to advance onto higher points of the end city. I finally got to the stairs leading up to the end ship, so I bridged over with netherrack and then tossed an enderpearl. I grabbed the potions from the brewing stand and started killing the shulker guarding the elytra. The chest actually gave me some really good loot with diamonds and a mending pickaxe, and then I finally got what I wanted this entire time, the elytra. I levitated over the abyss, and when the potion effect ran out, I used my elytra for the first time to keep exploring. After exploring for a little while longer, I finally found another end city, and this one was the biggest one yet. I broke in through the bottom once more, and I kind of speedrun this one. I I ran past all the shulkers since I didn't really care about them, and I used their levitation to gain more height in the structure. I kept letting them hit me until I got to the end ship, and I took a huge risk, but I enderpearled onto the platform. Once again, I fought the shulker guarding the elytra, I got a protection 4 diamond leggings from the first chest, and after getting a protection 3 helmet from the second chest, I officially earned my second elytra. When I ran all the way back to the portal, I threw an enderpearl to make it back to the main island, and I used my ender chest to break the dragon egg that was sitting on the end stone. I finally jumped back into the portal to the overworld, and beat the game. I accidentally broke my bed, so I had to make it all the way back over to where I moved my base, but that was fine. When I made it back home, I decided to use some of the 76 levels I had to enchant two diamond shovels. The very last addition I wanted to add to my base was some sort of wall and defense system to keep zombies out. These shovels were going to come in very handy for this project. To start this defense, I first needed to terraform the land around my base to make it all flat. I completely just excavated every hill nearby and basically flattened out the entire area. I also used the dirt from clearing these areas to fill in most of the holes and valleys that were nearby my base. I also cleared out all the sunflowers and trees from the area, and I started digging three blocks deep on the front side of my stairs. You can probably see where I'm already going with this, but if you don't, then just wait. You'll see soon. I continued to get rid of, like, all the area here, and I made the width two blocks wide so this could actually work. I also had a ravine near my house, which interferes with my plan, so I built a makeshift valley around it, which worked pretty well, too. After getting through the ravine, I kept clearing out the front of my base. I went back upstairs so I could sleep the night, and then right as I got up, I went straight back to work again. I realized that I needed to cut into this mountain to continue, so I terraformed it completely and filled this little cave in to completely flush it out with the rest of the land. There was a waterfall that was gonna get in my way in the future of this defense, so I went up to go block it off, but I ended up doing something really stupid. Oh, what? No, that's gonna hit the ground. Please, please make it. Oh my- I went back up and blocked off the water, and then I continued building the tunnel for which my zombie trap was gonna take place. I finally completed the entire tunnel for the trap around my base, and it was now time for phase 2 of this defense. For this part of my plan, I was gonna need a lot of iron, and the reason I need a lot of iron is to make a ton of buckets. So I placed down like 20 furnaces in my base, and I grabbed every single piece of iron ore from my chests and shulker boxes, and then I started smelting. Then, I just spent a few days going to the bottom of the nether to gather as many shulker boxes full of lava as I could, and this 
wasn't even one third of the amount of buckets that I had to get, so I had to take multiple trips to my base and back to the nether. Nevertheless, I finally got the last bucket filled with lava, and I don't doubt I'm gonna have to go back here to the nether to refill these later on. But for now, I just started the project. I filled every single block in this three block hole with a lava source, and I made sure that none of it was flowing, because then that would just kind of trigger my OCD, and I know it would probably annoy some of you guys too. After making a ton of trips to the nether and back to my base, I finally finished placing down the last source of lava. Now that all the lava is placed down, I have to somehow trick the creatures into falling into it. If you didn't know this already, having an open trap door will make a mob think that they can walk on it, but in turn they'll just fall straight through it. This is exactly how I'm going to trick the zombies, spiders, and coyotes into falling into the lava. Since I already had a few stacks of logs, I just used those to make enough trap doors needed, and then I just spent the rest of this time placing down every single trap door. This actually took a while, because after placing down each trap door, I also had to go back through and open every single one. But I actually got this done pretty quickly, and it was much faster than placing the lava down, so that was kind of nice. I'm just going to skip most of this process since it was so repetitive, but here's me opening the last trap door so you can now see the finished product. Now was the final part of my zombie defense. I wanted to build a wall to guarantee that most mobs couldn't get in, and also to try and stop tarantulas from skipping the first trap. Since I had a lot of cobblestone, I decided to just use that for my walls because I needed a lot of walls, and that was the material that I had the most of. I spent the next couple of days just working on this wall and making sure it was good enough to keep the creatures away, so I built it a little higher than usual, and I also placed quartz slabs over top of it. The reason I did this was because tarantulas were still able to climb over walls, and I just wanted to make sure that they couldn't get in and attack me. After finishing this part of my defense, I was now officially done with my base, and I was ready to go out on the rest of my journey. I tested the trap out on a few zombies and other mobs, and it actually worked surprisingly well. While I was exploring a desert, I found a structure with a ton of zombies surrounding it in the water. I used my bow to try and take these guys out, but since the water kept putting the flame out, I decided to just go in with my sword. Zombie parts were floating everywhere, and it was getting really annoying to kill these guys, but I finally managed to do it. I finally killed every single zombie, and it was now time to explore the structure. I broke in and instantly saw a ton of these mutated zombies and molded, so I tried attacking it, but it wouldn't work from that angle. I then broke in through the top and decided that I was just gonna attack them from there. I spent the rest of this time clearing out all these things, and it was taking really long, so I started getting really impatient. I tried using my bow, but that really wouldn't work, and when I just ran in, I instantly got ganged up on, so I had to try and make an escape. When I went back in, I just kept grinding out all these zombies and killing as many as I could. When I finally got a good amount of the creatures taken care of, I decided to let them free. I kept these things back with my bow, and then I just went in on the rest of them with my sword. When I returned to the structure to loot the chest, there was actually a lot of weird things that were here. First off, there was a diamond reinforced shield, which apparently has a max protection of 2560, and then there was this thing called a pickerang, which apparently doubled as a pickaxe and a boomerang. After that, there were a few potions and a slime in a bucket. I used the bucket and I don't really know what I expected. I played around with the pickerang though and this thing was actually pretty cool. It could gather items for you but unfortunately it wasn't a very good weapon against mobs. I returned to my base and slept for the night and also I just spent the rest of these few days gathering more materials and food which you probably don't care about. While I was looking over the top of my base I noticed that there was a cave blocked off by iron bars in a nearby ravine. When I flew down to explore it I saw that there was this creepy looking deer thing that was just locked up. I was kind of scared that it would attack me so I decided to be safe and go back back up to my base and gear up just in case. Since I didn't really want to die this far in, I brewed a few more potions and stacked up on gear before I went up to this thing. It was better to be safe than sorry, and since I've almost survived the full 100 days, it wouldn't really be a waste. It could all be overkill though, because I'm pretty sure I was stacked enough, and I don't think that this thing will do much to my diamond armor, but again, I just wanted to be safe. It was now time. I flew back down to the cave, and when I got there, I started getting attacked by coyotes. Great. I spleefed the coyotes, and I just killed the rest of these annoying things, but right as I got rid of them, I had a bunch bunch of zombies start attacking me also. So I just did my best to clear them out, but I was getting really impatient and I decided to just break into this cave. When I got in, the creature didn't really do anything and I didn't want to take any chances, so I just shot it. I started hitting it and it wasn't really doing anything back to me, so I ended up just killing it. I got an epic advancement for it and I didn't even feel like I did anything, so that was pretty anticlimactic. When I checked the chest, I got a diamond wand and I didn't even know what that did, so I guess I was gonna have to find out later. The second item I got was a heart of diamond and when I used it, it spawned a little stone creature that was actually pretty cute. I don't really like cute things, so I just ended up killing it, and I finally headed back to my base. And there we go. That was 100 days in a zombie wasteland. Again, make sure to leave a like before you head out. If we can hit 5,000 likes on this video, then I'm gonna do another one of these. And of course, subscribe if you enjoy the videos. Anyways, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you later. Peace.